Hi, so this video is done by Annabelle Peel, Amber Swan, Tom Braxton, Anna Richards and Tangent Finesse. This will be all about lysosomes. So as you can see, I am drawing the cell. It is the basic structural, functional and biological unit of all known living organisms. But this video is all about lysosomes. The purpose of lysosomes is to digest things. They might be used to digest food or break down the cell when it dies. The lysosome is basically a specialised vesicle that holds a variety of enzymes. The enzyme proteins are first created in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. These proteins are packaged in a vesicle and sent to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus then does its final work to create the digestive enzymes and pinches off a small, very specific vesicle. That vesicle is a lysosome. From there, the lysosomes float around in the cytoplasm until they are needed, as you can see I've just drawn it there. The lysosomes are single membrane organelles. Lysosomes are fairly straightforward organelles in terms of structure and can make up as much as 5% of the intracellular volume. The various acid hydrolases are being drawn as small circles inside the lumen of the lysosome. There are over 50 different acid hydrolases inside lysosomes, all contributing to the overall function, which will be covered further on in this video. Some examples of the type of hydrolases present include nucleases and lipases. They must be an acidic environment present in the lumen for these enzymes to operate at their optimum activity. Currently being drawn is a V-type ATPase. It's responsible for pumping protons or hydrogen ions across the membrane into the lumen to maintain its acidity. As you can see, as the hydrogen ions move through the ATPase, it converts ATP to ADP plus phosphate. This supplies the energy necessary for maintaining the active transport against the concentration gradient. It also supplies the energy for other cellular processes. There are also other very important components of the membrane, including ion transporters and channels, as well as specific transporters for the products created by macromolecule digestion. Transmembrane proteins comprise a large majority of the membrane, with the two most common, LAMP1 and LAMP2, accounting for 50% of the total content of proteins. Those included on the diagram are in fact a very tiny fraction of the actual amount of proteins present. In fact, there are usually over 100 in each membrane. The membrane itself is roughly 7 to 10 nanometers thick and appears to be protected from the activity of the enzyme within the lumen by a thick glycocalyx layer, which is about 8 nanometers thick. It is mainly comprised of oligosaccharide side chains from the most common proteins found in the membrane, type 1 time transmembrane proteins as previously mentioned, for example LAMP2. The overall pH of the lumen of the lysosome is maintained at around 4.5 to 5.0, which means that should its contents manage to leak out into the surrounding cytosol, it could do little harm to the other organelles as the cytosol maintains a pH of about 7.2, which is far higher than the optimum pH of the enzymes. This is a video showing the three main pathways of degradation by lysosomes within a cell. The first pathway is called endocytosis, which is the internalization of extracellular molecules which are destined for degradation within the cell by lysosomes. These extracellular molecules may be, for example, membrane proteins, which are part of a single transduction cascade and must be internalized within the cell in order to terminate the signal transduction cascade. They're internalized in endocytic vesicles. These vesicles then fuse with an early endosome. The molecules are then sorted into intraluminal vesicles, which are within the endosome. After many vesicles have formed in the endosome, it becomes a multivesicular body. This multivesicular body then travels along the cytoskeleton of the cell towards the lysosomes. As the multivesicular body travels along the microtubules of the cell, it matures and its pH decreases and it becomes a late endosome. When this late endosome reaches the lysosome, it will fuse with it, forming an endolysosome. The intraluminal vesicles are then released inside the lysosome and are degraded by the acid hydrolase enzymes. The next degradation pathway is called phagocytosis. 
This is when a pathogen is internalized within the cell into a phagosome. The phagosome would also travel on, along the cytoskeleton of the cell and fuse with the lysosome, forming a phagolysosome. The pathogen is released into the lumen of the lysosome and is degraded. The third pathway of degradation I'm going to talk about is called autophagy, which is when one of the cell's own components is degraded by the lysosomes. This component of the cell could be, for example, an old or malfunctioning organelle. The organelle that's going to be degraded is surrounded by membrane, which is called an autophagosome. This autophagosome then also travels towards the lysosomes along the cytoskeleton of the cell and fuses with them. This forms an autophagolysosome. The contents are then degraded by the lysosome. This is a video looking at lysosome formation. The objects drawn in green are the acid hydrolase enzymes found within the lysosome. These acid hydrolase enzymes are made in the Golgi apparatus and are transported to the late endosome via transport vesicles. They are transported using an attachment to a mannose 6-phosphate, which then will attach to the mannose 6-phosphate receptors, which is drawn here in blue in the Golgi apparatus. The transport vesicles will travel to the late endosome and fuse with it to release the content of acid hydrolase. The mannose 6-phosphate receptors are recycled back to the Golgi apparatus via transport vesicles. The lysosome is formed by budding off of the mature late endosome containing the acid hydrolase. Normally, in lysosomes that are happy and loving life, enzyme and other products of the lysosome happily and quite easily move from the ER to the Golgi and then into the lysosome. But when this function does not work, it leads to the disease of the lysosome. Often, a lysosomal storage disease. This can happen because the enzyme is unable to leave the ER and go to the Golgi to be packaged. This happens in Gaucher's disease, where there is a dysfunction of glucocerebrosidase, as it is misfolded and it can no longer leave the ER. In other diseases, the enzymes needed to enter the lysosome get stuck in the Golgi and are unable to move and the final type of most common dysfunction is where the enzyme itself is non-functioning. It quite easily makes it to the lysosome, but when it gets there, it is able to break down its substrate. All of these lysosomal storage diseases are bad news, as it leads to a build-up of products. So within the cell, there becomes more and more lysosomes, changing the shape of the cell, and if these lysosomes break, possibly causing cell death. This is the worst possible outcome when it occurs in your central nervous system, which is very common.